Ooh, what's good, family? So mash the like button, subscribe, and lick off the bell. <laughs> it's bad for your man's Horge Bumbosos. He going for it right now, 100%. Now listen, I give him some credit, although to be fair, he did actually start putting his hand in the air like he thought he won. I mean, <laughs> these f these guys have stop got to stop capping, man. Yeah, Bumello tried that. When he got his wig pushed back by Bivol. Stop capping. Yeah? You got your head boxed off. Admit it. Now, again. Bumbosus, he did concede. I mean, how could he not? <laughs> you lost ten rounds to two. <laughs> Canal. <laughs> if you can't concede after losing ten rounds to two, when do you concede? That's the question. So, yeah, he did half concede. But the other half of him, when the decision was being read out, he had his hand in the air. These guys. But I think... Like, George Cambosas had his kids there. And this shows you how, or more and more, I see this. these fighters are just gassed. That's what it is. You have to be gassed. You have to believe, well, a lot of the guys, especially at the top level, they believe they're just on another level. Yeah? And I think you need that to get in the ring in front of 40,000 people and potentially get knocked spark out. So, it's kind of, as outsiders, we can critique how they act weird but it goes hand in hand the more and more I see it but then again reality is reality we all know when you got your head boxed off yeah <laughs> you got your head boxed in man and I feel that once you listen once your bonce has been boxed in for you everyone knows what time it is I've done a little bit of sparring and you know when someone's got your number yeah Barmelo knew Bivo had his number Bombosus knew Haney had his number yeah touched him all over Real good. Now, anyway, let's, now we've got the political part of the way. The fight. Listen. Oh, man. I had a mare the last few hours. Yeah? Had a mare. No doubt about it. The, the whole Cordina thing messed me up big. <laughs> that, I mean, listen. Cordina, he ain't got no power. <laughs> Cordina ain't got no power. Ogawa had no power. That was a certain bet. And you know what? I'm pissed off about some goofy cat, yeah, who told me about this fight. I don't even know the two guys. Someone said, why be? Yeah, check out the Cordina vs. Ogawa fight. That fucked my coin up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I ended up... It's sort of madness anyway. Bottom line is, man, it got messy for the YB. 100% got messy. Ended up probably coming out a few hundred quid up in the end. But it was supposed to be a big night bank robbery for Team Haney. But dead-ass Cordina. Yeah, what kind of... what kind of? How can you not knock no one out and then knock the guy out when I got coin on the line? Piss me off anyway. Back to Haney. Haney came out. And the thing is, just to describe my psychology, yeah. Obviously, I've just seen... I had bags, I'm talking about. I hope... <laughs> I'm talking about probably 30% of my net worth on Haney to win on points. And... Um, Haney to win on points and the fight to go distance. Yeah? Obviously, that's all set up. It's been set up for weeks. Two twos. The whole Cordina thing happened and my ass started flapping thinking, shit, I've just lost oh, a big bag on that. <laughs> I can't afford to lose the other half. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? One of them ones. So I ended up, oh, it's been a, it's a, right, a mess. It's a whole proper mess. But anyway, listen, like I said, I expected Haney to come out and boxed the guy's ears off. I didn't expect a stoppage. I expected Devin Haney 12 rounds. And I've been I did pure research for this one as well and it see it pretty much played out how I expected. I did get a little nervous though. There was quite a few people saying, "Oh, Cambos is counter punch and then actually Devin Haney this really was as, as pretty much as close. I said before the fight, Devin Haney's going to need a kind of Shakur Stevenson versus Valdez performance. This wasn't far off that, especially when you factor in that we know Haney isn't a isn't a as a sharp puncher as Stevenson. So when you take up the sharp punchiness that Stevenson has in edge over Haney, really it was a very similar performance, and Haney definitely did increase his level. Again, one of the key things. A lot of the people who thought Camposas had a chance, or had more of a chance, were talking about how Haney, he does, or in his low, in lesser fights, against Jojo Diaz, against Linares, he just wasn't as sharp. He was getting caught with silly shots. 
It's, it almost looks like as if in them fights he hadn't fully prepped for his opponents. This tonight he came in on his job. He knew it, he he was prepared for everything that Cambosis did. Because I actually believed Cambosis or Cambosis is a better counter puncher than Linares and Jojo Diaz. And your man's really tonight Cambosis caught Haney less. Haney just knew. And, he, and to be fair, he said that he said he knew where George was going to be, and that was the bottom line. All the things that George normally does, uh, essentially, George is a, a huge counter puncher. Where the minute you get your shot off, he's going to come leaping in, almost like a cheap Manny Pacquiao kind of thing. Well, Haney was on his p's and q's tonight. Yeah, because I again, I think. Well, listen, George is definitely as good as, if not better, Linares and. Jojo Diaz, in my opinion, and really Haney put on a better. Per Haney beat them more con or beat Cambosis tonight more convincingly. Now after the fight, Cam and again this this is why I tell you that Cambosis is gassed. He says, "Ah, oh, we're going to need to do the rematch." Listen, there's zero percent need for the rematch. Yeah, and the thing is, Cambosis isn't a Canelo. Where, I mean, what is it with this? What is it with this whole rematch clause thing? Rematch clauses make sense when you're a massive star. These got everyone trying to do it now. It's really quite odd. Although, to some extent, we do have to give George Cambosis praise for actually fighting someone decent. He could have fought bums, no doubt. Although, then again, really, should we give praise to people for doing things they're supposed to do? Yeah? If you're the true undisputed champion, you're supposed to fight the next best person. Guess what? In the UFC, when you become UFC champion, Dana White doesn't say, okay, you're UFC champion now, let's fight three bums. No. You go in there, and you fight the next best one. So I ain't gonna, on hindsight, I'm not really gonna give. Cambosis credit for doing what he's supposed to do. Um, but yeah, the rematch, I mean, listen, if I'm sh pretty sure from Devin Haney's point of view, really, that'll be an easy money fight for Devin Haney in the rematch. The only way I see George Cambosis making a difference is if he comes in, and that's the thing you see, we hear a lot of people talking about war. Oh, I'm coming to war. And that was another thing, to be fair, that had me a little bit nervous, was the fact that I thought that Cambosis being in front of his home crowd, even though historically there was no evidence really. A lot of people got gassed up off the Tiafimo fight. A lot of people were telling me, oh, why be Cambosis is a warrior. When you actually watch the Tiafimo fight back, you'll notice that Cambosis looked good because Tiafimo was running forward with his chin in the air. Do you understand? It's very easy to look decent against someone who's wading forward with no risk, with no discipline. So that made that all them shots that landed, they that made Cambosis look good. But in reality, when you would if if Tiafimo had to come in, and I said this before the fight, if Tiafimo had to come in like he did against Lomachenko, disciplined, calm, behind the jab, it would have been a complete different fight. And I don't think I think it would have gone well, I think Tiafimo, I mean, it was a split decision win anyway for Cambosis. If Tiafimo had been calm, he'd have won that hands down in my opinion. But it is what it is. The reason I tell you that is because guess what? Your man's George and a lot of his fans were talking about war and whatnot, and that was one area, the only area I really I saw him getting the look in. But again, I didn't know how serious he was. Now, like I said, based on the evidence, really, people don't change from their evidence. I.e., people what people normally do is what they know is what they're gonna do. Although. Having said that, <laughs> what do we know? Well, Cordina had not known one out. <laughs> yeah. So even that, that's the thing with the future. The future's uncertain. That's why odds exist, because you get mad things like what happened to Joe Cordina. Joe Cordina goes life and death, 12 rounds with bums. All of a sudden, he smoked the best person on his resume in two rounds. Complete scam. Yeah, I'm telling you, that was a scam. But I tell you that because, like I said... What had me a bit nervous about George Cambosis going into this fight was he was talking about war, but not only that, he was fighting at home. And I thought maybe the, being in front of 40,000 fans, he was going to be prepared to get stuck in. That wasn't the case tonight. Yeah, he said, oh, well, Devin Haney was, he didn't want to stand and fight. But really, going back and watch the 
Cambosis versus Tifimo Lopez fight. Cambosis wasn't war marching forward. Yeah? Cam Tifimo versus Cambosis gave the impression that Cambosis was offensive, but that was only because Tifimo was walking forward with holes with his leaky defense wide open, which made Cambosis look like he's super offensive. In reality, we saw tonight how offensive Cambosis is. He's not really that offensive. He doesn't have that natural um, Canelo or, um, well, Canelo in the first four rounds or um, Mike Tyson kind of pressure. He doesn't have that. He wants to sit back and capitalize on your mistakes. So if you go in there like Tiafimo, you're going to have a hard night against George. But Haney, I mean, this is showing me that and I, the, re the rematch for me would go the same way. Because the only chance Cambosis has is to go in there, high guard, and just walk through the fire. But, in my opinion, if he was going to do that, he could have done that tonight. They should have known that, should they not? And, to be honest with you, it's easier said than done, isn't it? It's easier said than done just to start walking forward through shots. Very few fighters in history really want to do it. But then again, we've seen throughout history, I've mentioned it before, we've seen people down on their luck. Like Nigel Benn versus McLennan. And let's not forget as well, people. When Nigel Benn got punched out of the ring against McLennan, McLennan wasn't no Devin Haney. McLennan was probably, pound for pound, the hardest punching dude from that weight in history. And still, Nigel Benn got himself back in the ring and warred on. Cambosis could have tried that, couldn't he? Especially since Cambosis said Haney has doesn't have no power. So it begs the question, why weren't you putting it on dude who has no power? There you go then. He didn't want it. Like he said it like he implied he wanted it. He implied he wanted war. He didn't want war tonight. Yeah, and I hate that I hate that whole saying of oh he didn't want to fight. Well wait there a minute. You said before the fight he doesn't have power and he likes to run. So if you know someone doesn't have power and they like to run, why didn't you train for that? Okay, in my mind, yeah, if I know someone likes to run, if I know someone doesn't have no power, I'm going straight forward. Oops, he didn't do that. So there's a lot of contradictions and that's why, all in all, George Cambosis is gassed. Yeah, he got way too gassed up on all of the hype. All of a sudden, this the thing you see before the Tiafimo Lopez fight. Oh, well, yeah, going into the going into the Lopez fight, Cambosis was was a twenty to one underdog. Why is that relevant? Well, all of a sudden, all the people who was or went once Cambosis won, all of a sudden everyone started sucking him off. Oh, why be Cambosis? Cambosis, Cam you man didn't know him, yeah. So let's not forget that he wasn't. Yeah, he had. I said this before as well. In my opinion, Cambosis had one of his best nights and Tiafimo had his worst night. I don't believe you'll ever see Tiafimo look as bad as that again. That was his worst night and George had his best night. And even then it was a close fight and even then he got knocked down, you understand? So a lot of the things, a lot of the hype's gone into this and not only that, George has bought into the hype, clearly. He got way too gassed wasn't on weight for example and I'm not saying that he wasn't training but it's all these little things just way too gas not concentrating too much talking he loved himself too much he loved the sound of his own voice too much but listen back to Haney Haney solid performance and really I have to give a lot of credit to Haney because guess what Tank Davis he can't even fight people in his own country Haney flying across town for sorry flying across God knows, 10,000 miles, was prepared to do it without his dad. Yeah? I believe Devin Haney's only taken a 25% split as well. Yeah? Dillian White was throwing his toys out the pram about getting paid 25%, and he didn't do anything in the fight. Devin Haney just won for 25%, do you understand? That's what true people do. So I do really, I, I, love, I respect Haney like that. He really is about it as well. Yeah, he won it. How many people can we say that about these days? Not many. So he really is. I'd love to, I'd love to work with Haney on. I do think he needs to add some, some, 
he he shot well we all know Haney's limitation I I think he'd be dangerous if he could get if he could learn to dig a bit I think that's really the only game he needs to add now the only part of his game that's lacking is that stinging game not every time but he's got the pity patty stuff and he's got the the long boxy thing down pat now listen Floyd Mayweather he was able to string it out wasn't he Floyd Mayweather never stopped no one but that's why he was considered one dimensional I don't think there's no reason why you have to be one way or the other I think the best way is to be a, a mix up almost but listen that's something that potentially Haney can work on. Where he goes from here. If I was him, I'd take the easy money rematch. But Haney was implying that he don't want that. Haney was implying he wants to go on to bigger and new things. And that to me is shocking. In as much as it shows you the ambition of the man. Because me, yeah, if I had 5 million bucks and a rematch clause, I'd be sitting back saying, listen, no problem. I'll tax the ass again for 5 million bucks. No problem. Do you understand? The fact he wants to go and fight Lomachenko or whoever else, Tank or Ryan Garcia, fair play to the guy. And that's another thing, just quickly, Ryan Garcia is a clown. He came out and said, oh, that was boring. Bro, didn't you go 12 rounds with Tago? Yeah, some dude called Bumgo. Never heard of the guy. You went like 20 rounds with him. About boring. Yeah, you're going life and death with bumps. About boring. You wouldn't know anything about boring. Tell like, you you know everything you wrote, listen listen Ryan Garcia you wrote the book on boring yeah your resume is boring the bums you fight are boring how about that but listen Haney yeah obviously you man the YB dropped the bag today on Cordina big L big L for the YB right now and that's what you see don't ever listen to people yeah when people come and give you tips don't listen to them stick to your game my game tonight was supposed to be Haney and then some dudes oh YB Cordina, Cordina, Cordina. Bum ass Cordina, man. Piss me off. Where's my coin? Yeah? Bum gower. What? No chin have an ass. How are you going to go in there and get chin by a dude with no power? Okay, no. Too many bums in this game, I'm telling you. The game's full of bums. Chinless one. The worst thing is, yeah, people today are chinless as well. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's something to do with the... I don't know whether it's something to do with the C19 shots. Yeah, that's kind of wasting everyone's whiskers away. You know what I'm saying? You just don't know, do you? I don't know whether it's something in the fluoride in the water. It's just burning everyone's nerve. You know what I'm saying? Because these guys ain't got no chin. One shot. I mean, how are you getting chinned by dudes with, with no power? Oh, anyway. Listen, Haney, on his job right now. I'm really happy for him that him and Bill proved me wrong. I thought that it might be better for Bill to sit back in the cut, given it was late notice. But listen, Bill came through. And then man were put on a Superman team, 100%. Yeah, the A team was there, and they shut Bumbosas down. No doubt, 